hello everybody this is rudra pradhan here and welcome you all to bmd lecture series today our discussion is on inferential analytics and that to will continue for business problem relating to multiple sample case and in fact we have already discussed this concept with respect to t statistics and z statistics and then we will continue with respect to population proportions and chi square distributions and f distributions let us have the first case for, you know the kind of you know population proportion and uh, some of the highlights of this lecture are like this uh, the population proportions population variance f statistics then analysis of variance anova and uh, categorical data and finally goodness of fit so the the discussion is with respect to two population proportions so that means here the idea is we have a two different samples and we like to check whether there is a significant difference between two sample mean and uh, here the sample observation with respect to population proportions so as a result we have altogether three different situations so in the first situations so uh, both the samples means say it, uh, since there are two samples let's say p1 and p2 so this uh, p1 is the proportion of first one and p2 is the proportion of the second one so then accordingly so either they are equals that means p1 equal to p2 and the second case is if not p1 less than to p2 or p1 greater than to p2 so accordingly we are going to address this problem with three different situation so the first situation the hypothesis will be p1 equal to p2 and as a result the difference between p1 minus p2 equal to 0 and the corresponding alternative hypothesis will be corresponding alternative hypothesis will be p1 minus uh, p2 not equal to 0 and this is the case 1 and the case 2 will be uh, p1 uh, less than equal to p2 so this is the case 2 uh, case 2 uh, option and uh, in this case so p1 minus p2 less than equal to 0 then by default the alternative hypothesis will be p1 minus p2 greater than equal to 0 so that means uh, uh, in the th uh, accordingly the third case will be uh, the difference between the two will be having some kind of you know uh, a particular difference which is less than 2 d so that is what actually p1 less than equal to p2 plus d so accordingly the difference between p1 minus p2 will be followed by the difference uh, you know the d component so accordingly the corresponding alternative hypothesis will be p1 minus p2 greater than to uh, greater than to d so that means this is case 3 so we have all together three different cases that we have to test with the, the case of you know two population proportions so that means there are two populations then we have to draw the samples and we like to check whether there is a significant difference between the two and if there is a significant difference which one is the greater and which one is the lesser and how much this difference and uh, which one is uh, you know whether the particular difference is uh, statistically significant so this is the kind of you know things we are uh, we are uh, going to check and address so accordingly so the structure we, which we like to follow is the z statistics and uh, here the idea is that you know uh, we have to select uh, means we have to test for the last samples so like earlier case so we can use z statistics provided sample size will be greater than to 30 and uh, uh, then you know there is a availability of you know uh, population variance uh, accordingly we will test the particular you know uh, kind of you know requirement so the corresponding test statistics will be so like you know z equal to p1 minus p2 that is actually sample mean uh, and this is also sample mean and their difference need to be tested whether it is a statistically significant or not then accordingly the population proportions will be p1 equal to p2 then the as a result the difference will be equal to 0 then in the case of you know p1 here the sample uh, sample case will be x1 by n1 and in the case of p2 so it will be x2 by n2 and accordingly the total probability 
for this particular you know selection will be x 1 plus x 2 by n 1 plus n 2. So, this is x 2. So, uh, x 1 plus x 2 by n 1 plus n 2. So, as a result we will get uh, you know the probability of happenings then the counterpart will be the if uh, you know 1 minus q that is not happening. So, accordingly uh, this 1 1 minus p is nothing but actually uh, q. So, uh, the so the standard deviation of this particular component will uh, give you the kind of you know standard errors and which will add the value for this testings that to the jet uh, jet testings. So, accordingly so we can we can uh, test a particular you know situation and check whether the difference will be statistically significant or not so the procedure of testing uh, you know more or less same so we will we will fix the probability uh, you know that is the alpha component and then we will allow the particular case uh, whether it is you know one tail or two tail then you have to specify the critical uh, points that is the uh, confidence interval and then the rejected zone. So, we like to check whether the z calculated will be falling under the accepted zones or you know rejected zones. If it is uh, under the uh, rejected zones then you are rejecting the true null hypothesis that in that case p 1 equal to p 2 and if not then you have to accept the null hypothesis. So, the business inference will be drawn accordingly and uh, as a result the management decision can be taken care. So, uh, so in order to justify this particular you know structures in order to justify this particular structures so let us you know uh, go by you know uh, you know little bit uh, uh, elaboration. So, here in this case so we are transferring the population proportion to single ones that is actually p. So, which is nothing but x 1 plus x 2 by n 1 plus n 2 then corresponding q equal to 1 minus p, but now when they are you know having actually difference then as a result the sample variance uh, the sample uh, you know uh, the sample variance will be considered like this. So, corresponding to the previous ones it is only single ones. So, that is p into q uh, subject to the adjustment of you know sample observations. So, here p 1 q 1 is the first part and p 2 q 2 is the second part that is for the you know second pro, uh, sample. Then the combined standard deviation will be square root of p 1 by p 1 into q 1 by n 1 plus p 2 into q 2 by n 2. So, accordingly so, the structure uh, the structure of you know testing will be uh, like this. So, the in this case it is a, a same structures, but now here in this case uh, uh, you know with the help of you know uh, kind of you know uh, null hypothesis. So, we have to see the difference will be exactly equal to 0. So, then correspond uh, corresponding to this particular you know structure z will be finally, uh, uh, you know the difference between two propo uh, sample proportions and that will be adjusted with the the standard deviations. Then finally, we will get the kind of you know uh, the kind of you know z calculated and accordingly. So, this is actually first proportion sample 1 then proportion from the sample 2 and this is n 1 the sample size for the first ones and this is n 2 the sample size for the second one and this is population proportion p 1 and this is population proportion p 2. So, q 1 by default will be 1 minus p 1 and q 2 will be 1 minus p 2. So, now uh, having the information from the problems. So, we have to uh, we have to actually put all these figures in the jet uh, you know uh, jet statistic then we like to calculate the jet uh, you know uh, jet value. So, then on, on the basis of you know jet calculate jet calculated value. So, we have to compare with jet critical and then uh, we will take the particular you know decisions. So, here is uh, the, uh, the same structures in this case you know we have actually single component instead of pure you know p 1 q 1 p 2 q 2. So, we are putting actually p, p into q. So, we are p equal to x 1 plus x 2 by n 1 plus n 2. So, as a result the total uh, observations will be uh, n 1 p 1 and then n 2 p 2 and accordingly the adjustment will be q equal to 1 minus p. So, now these are the typical structure through which you have to follow and uh, here is the testing procedure and in this case the null hypothesis will be a p 1 minus p 2 and uh, uh, that is equal to 0 because we are we are assuming that you know both are you know same proportion uh, and uh, uh, the alternative hypothesis is not equal to. So, as a result their difference equal to not equal to 0 and uh, we are fixing here alpha and that to 1 percent. So, as a result if you allow two sides 
then uh, the alpha by 2 will be 0 0.005 uh, 0 0 this side and 0 0.005 this side and this is what actually a rejected zones and this uh, 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 no sorry this is accepted zones and this is what the rejected zone and this is what the rejected zone and accordingly the z criticals is 2.575 and uh, also this side 2.575. So, that means technically if the z calculated is uh, less than 2 minus 275, we are going to reject the uh, true null hypothesis. That means in that case uh, population of proportion p 1 equal to p 2 and uh, if not then uh, then we have to uh, re, uh, you know uh, uh, we are not in a position to reject the null hypothesis and then we have to accept the alternative hypothesis. That means uh, p 1 minus p 2 not equal to 0. So, accordingly you will get some kind of you know inference and on the basis of uh, this inference we can uh, uh, get some kind of you know uh, you know uh, you know you, you have to take a kind of you know decision. And uh, to verify the particular structures we are taking actually two different options and in the first case in the first case so, uh, this is actually sample 1 and this is what the sample 2 and uh, n 1 is 100 and x 1 is 24. So, by default p 1 uh, you know estimated will be 24 by 100. So, that is coming 0 0.24 and similarly in the second case we have a sample size 95 and uh, we are assuming you know x 2 equal to 39 and as a result the prop uh, proportion sample proportion will be 39 by 95. So, it is coming actually 0 0.41. So, now so you have p 1 estimate that is 0 0.24 and we have p 2 estimate that is 0 0.41 and uh, as a result uh, you, you can also equally calculate p combined and then that is nothing but actually x 1 plus x 2 by n 1 plus n 2. So, that is nothing but actually 24 plus 39 divide by 100 plus 95. So, this 100 and this 95 this is actually coming under n 1 plus n 2 and then x 1 24 and x 2 39 it will be coming here uh, the upper part. So, as a result so your p uh, combined p estimate will be 0 0.323. Okay. So, now on the basis of that you know we can come to this you know z uh, statistics here. So, p 1 minus p 2 that is the difference. So, as a result that is nothing but 0. 0 0.24 and minus 0 0.41 and since we are assuming that you know p 1 and p 2 are equal. So, their difference will be coming equal, equal to 0. So, uh, this is what uh, we are you know putting 0 here and then so, uh, so p component and you know p is coming 0 0.323 as a result q will be 1 minus 0 0.323. So, it is coming 0 0.677 and this is the adjustment fac factors 1 by n 1 plus 1 by n 2 and after simplifications uh, we are getting z value equal to minus 2.54. So, now uh, the critical value which we have already highlighted in the previous slide is nothing but minus 2.575 and this value is coming actually minus 2.54 which is actually a, a you know lesser. So, as a result so you are not in a position to reject the true null hypothesis. So, that means technically there is a you know you know equality between two sample proportions. So, p 1 equal to p 2. So, that is what the inference we have to draw with this particular you know case. Okay. And uh, then in order to get you know more details we will take another examples. So, in this case so the populations uh, this is actually sample information 1 and this is what the sample information 2 and then we will get uh, you know combined samples. So, as a result again so p 1 minus p uh, p 1 estimate minus p 2 estimate. So, this minus uh, you know this which is in nothing but actually this much and uh, since we are assuming p 1 equal to p 2 population proportion. So, that is why uh, here and uh, as a result their difference equal to 0. So, uh, so putting 0 here. So, the final value will be 0 0.53 minus 0 0.43 and uh, the alternative hypothesis by default p 1 minus p 2 uh, not equal to 0. So, we, we have to take a decision whether to or reject this one or whether you have to accept this one. Right? So, then uh, accordingly uh, uh, accordingly so we have to calculate the z and uh, after simplifications the z value is coming 1.415. Now, uh, putting actually 5 percent uh, probability labels. So, critical value of z is coming actually 1.645 and this is the positive difference and as a result we can go to the right side of the uh, testing. So, here is we are not in a you know position to 
again you know reject the two null hypothesis. So, so accordingly you have to accept that you know they are actually uh, you know same. Okay, so let us uh, have this particular view. Okay, so this is what the kind of you know structure. So, uh, here is uh, so uh, uh, this is actually z criticals and this is what the z criticals. So, now placing the uh, you know uh, z value, so it is coming actually the accepted zone. So, as a result, so uh, you cannot actually uh, in a position to uh, you know reject the two null hypothesis. So, that means we have to accept this particular you know uh, case and p 1 equal to p 2. Okay. So, then again uh, again if you will take into the in excel sheet then uh, the particular structure will be like this. So, this is two sample case and uh, we have actually drawn uh, you know this is 100 and 100. So, 53, 43. So, it is a game between actually p 1 uh, q 1 p 2 q 2 and uh, then you know uh, we have the particular you know case like this and uh, 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 so we have to test and uh, whatever test we have actually obtained the kind of you know difference between uh, critical and you know the tabulated so then accordingly we have to conclude and in this case uh, we again come to the conclusion that you know we cannot reject the two null hypothesis so that means uh, both are actually uh, you know same so there is a you no know, difference Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is another uh, you know example similar kind of you know, examples, but it is the case of you know third. In the earlier case, we are we are you know assuming that you know p 1 equal to p 2 and as a result their difference uh, equal to 0. Now, in certain you know business problems, so it can be tested with the condition that you know their difference may not be equal to 0. So, their difference if not 0 either you know uh, it will be less than to 0 or uh, it will be actually uh, you know uh, something greater than 0. So, now uh, what will we see in this case let us assume that you know uh, so their difference is subject to actually uh, reflected by the d component. So, as a result so the uh, the sample or uh, the difference between sample means minus then we will put that you know the difference component that is the d component right. So, in this case, so earlier we are putting here actually 0 and now in this case sometimes ok. So, this is the value and uh, 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 assuming that you know this value is actually 0 0.10 then after again the same procedure you have to follow then you know after simplifications the value is coming 3.118 and then uh, at you know 1 percent probability level. So, z critical is coming 3.09 and since actually the calculated value is 3.118. So, uh, as a result, so this particular structure is coming in the rejected zones and here we are in a position to reject the true null hypothesis compared to previous two situations. In this case, you can uh, in a position to reject the true null hypothesis. Okay. So, accordingly we have to conclude and uh, this is what the typical case and uh, uh, we, we are here actually to draw the conclusion. So, since it is coming under the rejected zone, so you can actually uh, reject the two null hypothesis and then you will conclude as per the particular you know uh, problem structure. Okay. So, now we have actually discussed uh, you know uh, the kind of you know sample difference between two you know two different uh, structure and uh, uh, you know three different instances we have solved the problems in the first instance so the the, the population uh, sample proportions are same and uh, uh, the second in the second and third case sample proportions are not same so this uh, their difference will be reflected by some amount that is the uh, difference between two population proportions and accordingly we have a tested and then we give the signal that you know the sample difference are you know same or you know uh, they are different. But now like earlier case we have a single sample case we have actually uh, calculate the mean then you know comment about the population parameters and we are checking the difference between sample mean to population mean and checking whether there is a significant difference or not. And again with the help of you know 
sample mean, population mean, and you know the sample size, we can actually in a position to find out the confidence interval for uh, population mean, right. So, in this case, we can also do the kind of you know structures, uh, you know same structures. So, since we are going through checking the difference between two proportion, proportion, so here for this difference, that means the two different population proportions, so we can create a confidence interval. So, the same structure we can follow and then we are in a position to find out the confidence interval for the difference between two population proportions and accordingly the structure of this difference will be like this. So, this is actually the difference between the population proportion that is P 1 minus P 2 and their confidence interval typically depends upon the uh, difference between two sample uh, sample proportion that is P 1 minus P 2. So, as a result, so uh, the actually so it is it is the structure P 1 bar minus P 2 uh, you know, so that is the actually the difference, sample difference, and this is plus minus z of ones the particular you know uh, this particular component, right? So as a result, so in the left hand side, so this will be p1 minus p2 uh, uh, minus uh, this much, and uh, in the right hand side, that is the upper bound, so p1 minus p2 plus z upon this much. So, then accordingly you can create a confidence interval for the difference between two population proportions. In order to justify this particular structures, let us take an example and uh, uh, the corresponding example is here and uh, this is the sample case and uh, this is the sample 1 case and this is the sample 2 case and here the idea is uh, we are not checking the uh, difference whether statistically significant or not. So, here the objective is using the sample information, we, uh, we have to create a confidence interval for the population proportion. So, as a result, the same structure, so the difference between two sample mean will be P 1 minus P 2 and uh, then we have to put actually a Z confidence interval first. So, at 90 80 percent Z is coming 2.33. So, as a result, so this value Z will be reflected here and then the sample adjustment is through actually P 1 Q 1, so which is actually available here and then the uh, sample observation and this is for the case one sample 1 and this is for the sample 2. Now, square root of this will give you the kind of you know structure and uh, after you know once you simplify then uh, uh, finally, you will get actually the range minus minus 0 point, uh, 0 point 33 for 2 minus 0 0.206. Okay. So, now in, in order to uh, you know uh, uh, you know present uh, in a kind of you know structure with respect to uh, 98 confidence interval. So, the probability between these two range that is the population proportion between minus 0 0.33 for 2 minus 0 0.26 uh, 206 is nothing but 0 0.98. So, in other words, so in this particular situation your population means the with respect to the sample information 1 and sample information 2. So, the pop the difference between the confidence interval uh, for the difference between two population proportion will be minus 0 0.334 and minus 0 0.206. So, that is the lower limit and that is the upper limit. So, likewise with the help of you know sample informations, so you can create a confidence interval. So, whether it is a single case or you know a single sample case or it is a kind of you know multiple sample case, that is the case here in the case of you know two sample case. So, you can create a confidence interval for population parameter. So, in this case that is the difference between a P 1 and P 2. So, the, the population proportion 1 and population proportion 2. Okay. So, same things actually you can take it to the you know excel sheet and then you know with the help of you know uh, and data analysis. So, you can come you can come to the conclusion that you know the sample pro, uh, you know sample proportions uh, between uh, between you know sample 1 and sample 2 are you know statistically different and again uh, with the help of you know sample informations you can create a confidence intervals. So, now accordingly so uh, you know whatever we have actually information we have in the sample 1 and sample 2 uh, after getting the actually the difference and the kind of you know uh, uh, z value uh, that is you know z confidence intervals. So, uh, we can actually create a confidence interval. So, at the 95 percent, so the range range of this population uh, variance or uh, you know population proportion is nothing but actually 0 0.200 plus minus 0 0.0629. So, that this particular uh, this particular item is the nothing but you know difference between two population proportion that is P 1 
uh, p 1 uh, head minus p 2 heads and then this is the adjustment factors so z upon the uh, st uh, standard error uh, and then uh, with the help of you know uh, the kind of you know structures we can find out the lower bound and you can find out the upper bound. So, that means with the given sample informations. So, the difference between two population proportions will be lying between 0 0.137 to 0 0.263. So, likewise you can solve some of the problems connecting to uh, connecting to this you know uh, in the kind of you know uh, testing. So, that is the case of you know two sample case. Okay. So, uh, this is typically actually again a uh, confidence interval corresponding to the previous problem. Uh, we can actually create a confidence interval here. So, these are the these are the information about the uh, sample 1 and this is the sample 1 information and this is the sample 2 information and this this is this difference between two sample proportions and the confidence interval by default will be coming 0 0.137 and 0. 263 corresponding to information available for sample 1 and sample 2. And accordingly, so we can actually solve some of the problems. Okay, so same, same things we are actually uh, solving through Excel sheet and uh, the other part of this particular discussion is the F statistics now means whatever we have discussed uh, you know it is kind of in you know, a sample proportion and the, the kind of you know uh, uh, population proportions and that is with respect to two sample case and we have also discussed the similar problem in one sample case. So, now uh, uh, here we are going to discuss a situation where you know it is a kind of you know multiple sample case again and that to through F, uh, uh, F test and typically f test is nothing but you know the ratio between uh, two uh, you know uh, uh, very uh, two different situations that is actually s1 square by s2 square so it is actually ratio between two chi square statistics and then uh, we have to check whether you know this ratio is coming statistically significant or not corresponding to z test and t test so here actually you need two degree of freedoms corresponding to two different chi square observations so that is with respect to n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 so your critical level, critical value of this f depends upon two degree of freedom and corresponding to sample 1 and sample 2 you can get the kind of you know f calculated so once you get the f calculated then with the help of you know confidence interval that's f confidence interval so you can you can be in a position to report whether you are uh, you know able to reject the kind of you know difference or you have to accept the kind of you know difference so let's see here the kind of you know case so this is typically you know f distribution or you know f uh, you know f structures uh, you know out of you know four test statistics which we have already discussed so chi square and f is typically positive square distributions and uh, here the uh, the requirement of f is you know you must have a two degree of freedoms corresponding to sample 1 and corresponding to uh, sample 2 okay so this is the typical you know f, st f table structure and uh, uh, here is the kind of you know structure the degree of freedom part 1 and this is the kind of you know, degree of freedom 2 and depending upon the two degree of freedom then you have to specify the alpha component like this in this case 0 0.025 so as a result you are getting this critical value so now depending upon the problems you have to calculate the f start uh, uh, you know f calculated and then you have to compare with the f tabulated and then you have to put a comment or uh, get the inference corresponding to the you know hypothesis we have actually uh, means we we are going to test now on the basis of you know the first sample and the second samples you can find out the df1 and df2 and once you fix df1 df2 then you can actually get the critical value subject to uh, the alpha fixations that is the alpha here 0 0.025 and corresponding to point 0, 0 0.025. So, your uh, you know f critical is coming 3.59. So, this is here actually the 11th case. So, that means your sample information for n 1 equal to 11 and in this case it is coming 9. So, n 2 is equal to say 10. So, that means it is the n 1 equal to 11 and n 2 equal to 10 and alpha equal to uh, 0 0.5 at uh, total. Okay, so, this is how the typical case uh, to get the 
a critical value of f and once you get the critical value so then uh, uh, you can compare with the calculated f and accordingly you can get the kind of inner inference okay so now okay so now here the hypothesis will be since it's a variance test and we are assuming that you know two variants are same and uh, here so the uh, uh, variance is nothing but actually sigma 1 square minus uh, you know sorry is equal to sigma 2 squares and uh, the alternative hypothesis will be sigma 1 squares not equal to sigma 2 squares. So, that means the difference between the two sigma 1 square minus sigma 2 square equal to 0 and uh, the counterpart alternative hypothesis will be the difference not equal to you know 0. So, now corresponding to sample actually which we have already uh, you know discussed. So, let us say n 1 equal to 10 here and 2 equal to 12 and as a result your degree of freedom will be 9 and you know uh, uh, 9 and 11 and uh, whatever we have already highlighted in the previous slide. So, your f, f critical is coming 3.59 which we have derived from the table and then so with the sample informations. So, we, we have to calculate actually s 1 squares and then s 2 squares in this case here s 1 square is coming 1 and s 2 square is coming 3.59 and uh, as a result. So, the f calculated will be 0 0.28 and uh, since actually it is the lower limit. So, uh, so the typical case will be if f is a 0 0.28 and uh, in this case f greater than to 3.59. So, reject is 0 and 0 0.82 f uh, is if between actually 3.59 and you know you, you can you, you have to actually reject a 0. So, now the typical structure is actually so, you have to calculate the sample variance and then the ratio between two sample variance will give you the f calculated and with the help of actually sample observation 1 and sample observation of uh, uh, sample observation 2 that is the d f 1 and d f 2 and alpha. So, you have to find out the critical value and if the calculated will overtake the criticals then you are going to reject the true null hypothesis that means there is a significant difference between two sample and if not then you have to accept the alternative hypothesis. So, this is the similar kind of you know case but here the uh, structure is a little bit different compared to z statistic and t statistics. Okay, so, this is what the kind of you know uh, structures and whatever we have discussed and uh, here the same structures we have actually classified in this particular you know uh, uh, structure. So, this is you non know, uh, rejected zones and this is what the rejected zones and this is what you know f criticals and then uh, uh, this is actually lower limit of you know f criticals and accordingly you have to see what is the position of you know uh, f calculated. So, then accordingly you have to take the decision. Okay. So, let us take an examples and uh, since there are two samples machine 1 and machine 2 and uh, the sample observations n 1 is nothing but actually uh, 10 and uh, then in this case n 2 is equal to actually 12 and uh, 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 using actually Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheet you can calculate S 1 square and then you can also calculate S 2 squares. Now, the ratio between S 1 square by S 2 will give you the uh, F statistic that is F calculated and uh, with the help of you know previous kind of you know structures we have got the F criticals uh, in say F, uh, F criticals. Now, the F calculated will be compared with you know F criticals and since the f calculated is coming 5.63 and which is actually substantially higher than to f critical that is 3.59 so you have to reject this hypothesis that means there is a significant difference between the variance of these two samples so now so whatever problems we have discussed till now so it is the question of you know whether there is a difference between two sample mean or two variance of these two sample means and uh, uh, whether this difference is statistically significant or not. So, that means with the help of you know t statistic and z statistics we have calculated the mean difference and then we have checked the mean difference whether statistically significant or not. And again with the help of you know f and chi squares we have to check whether their sample variance means whether the sample variance are you know start difference between two sample variance are statistically significant or not. So, this is the case for you know f statistics. So, having two different samples with you know different sam sample size. So, we have to f we have we have seen here that you know the there is a significant difference between their you know uh, variance factor. So, that means these two samples are not so consistent and uh, their variance is coming actually 
a statistically significant that means it is a it is actually interesting thing that you need to take decision and accordingly you have to check where the where the variance is high and where the variance is low and accordingly management decision need to be taken into consideration okay and uh, uh, so far as uh, analysis of variance is concerned some of the assumptions are you know observations are drawn from randomly that's typically actually a random sampling and a, a random samples drawn from the populations and variance variance of these populations are you know equals so that is the null hypothesis we have set and then accordingly we have to take two different samples and uh, taken their you know sample variance and we are in a position to check whether their sample variance are you know equal with you know population variance and accordingly we, we we have to come to a conclusion that you know uh, yes there is a significant difference and, uh, and so corresponding to this particular you know problems so management need to be in the decision need to be taken care accordingly Okay, so these are the typical you know uh, discussion we have. We ha we we have you know gone through the population proportion, the confidence interval, and then F statistics that is the analysis of variance, and the level of significance and degree of freedom. So this is all about the structure about the uh, population proportions and the kind of you know F statistic. And in the next class, uh, we'll discuss more about this uh, F statistic, and we'll go for multiple sample case, and then we'll see how is the particular you know structure and what kind of you know uh, solution or inference we need when we have actually multiple samples parallelly, and uh, uh, some situation you can actually uh, 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 clubbing all these things and get some kind of you know inference, and then after you know getting the kind of you know significant difference, we'll check uh, uh, what is the difference between and which particular pairs will be coming actually significant and we will discuss all these in the next class with this we will stop here thank you very much have a nice time